Uh, good day students, my name is Peter Kiro and uh, I am your tutor for visual arts and uh, your subject visual art is subject which is uh, DPPE, DJPE and BESP. Uh, on your screen or rather on your slides you will see my name is there, my contact is there, very important on my cell phone. That is why I want to mention this before we go even any further with the rest of the presentation. 081-33-83070. Please do feel free to contact me at any time that you feel it's right for you. As long as you send me an SMS first, introducing yourself and also mentioning what your challenge is. With in regard to with this specific subject of visual arts. Do not not hesitate at all, do not hold back. I have experienced this with your assignments. You don't conduct your tutors. That's why you write questions that you don't even understand. But anyways, we are going to talk about our upcoming exam. So with your studies, uh, when you are going to start studying, as long as you don't understand, don't worry, don't hesitate, just let me know. I am here to help you and guide you through to make sure that you pass this specific module. Uh, with this specific presentation, we are going to look only on the three different units in your module as they are appearing on your screen. Unit 1, explain some basics of visual art perspectives. That is just a unit topic. That means under that specific unit 1 topic, there is subtopics that will also look at those, uh, I think, are more important as you are preparing for your, for your exam. Unit 2, examine and demonstrate how to draw pictures. Examine and demonstrate how to draw pictures. Unit three, clarify and demonstrate how to make models. Unit one, it's about the basic visual arts perspectives. Basic visual arts perspectives. So in that unit, uh, you will learn that you'll be talking more of the theory about visual arts, about the importance of visual arts and why visual arts should be taught or introduced to the pre-primary schools education. In unit two, it's about examining and demonstrating how to draw pictures. It's about the how to draw. Unit one is the why and Unit 2, it's about the how. Just don't confuse yourself. Unit 1, it's about why, the aims of and importance of visual arts education. That's why it will talk of the theories involved that convinces and the highlighted main points that contribute to the learning or developing uh, of children. Unit 2, it's about drawing pictures, and you will learn that. Clarify and demonstrate to make models. What is making the difference between drawing and making? Drawing, you are drawing using a pen, using a pencil. Making, you are using your hands. Practically, maybe you are using um, clay or, or papers to make objects. It's about making, that's why it says making there, and it's saying to demonstrate, meaning that in your, your, your study materials there is, there is in guiding information of how to guide and involve children when making models. Visual, the basic visual arts perspective, maybe we should also understand that specific term, basic, meaning the, ba the beginning, the base, the start, where to begin. That means it's applicable for young children who are just learning how to understand, how to express themselves through uh, the subject of visual arts. Unit one is uh, explained before, explain some basic visual arts perspectives. 
and you either you need to one you have got those um, different uh, perspectives i hope you will you are having your, your your study materials and you went through it and you know already what is covered under those uh, under the the, the 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 main topic which is uh, the basic visual arts perspective and is followed by the aims very important eh? aims and distinct areas of art education now and this is the thing i am going to introduce you only to these topics and what they mean and it's for you now to go into your study material and go through because we don't have much time to cover each and every detail about each and every subunit or, or subtitle pardon me so aims you need to to to, to under that specific uh, um subtitle in your study material you need to identify the aims and you need to identify the distinct areas of art education what are the aims think of the they still under these uh, subtitles there's still mini titles there aims think about the creativity about the self expressions about the eye hand training or hand eye training think about those are the aims why no if it's, if they are talking of uh, creativity what implies what is it about creativity and how is it connected to a development of a child what are do what are we expecting or how are we expecting children to react or to behave when um, we are talking about uh, uh, creativity so what are we expecting from uh, children there's distinct areas think of them distinct areas of art here you will be talking about visual arts the appreciations of art the dancing the drama those are the distinct so you need to study about these uh, distinct areas not only for your exam purposes but also for you to know because you are in this art education you need to know you need to know them what is visual arts what is drama how is drama differ from visual arts how is appreciating what is the definitions there those are the things that you need to know clarify some theories about interpreting learners art we are going to look uh, on two theories that are highlighted in your model uh, or your study material and uh, we will see what is being said there and these are not long theories these are just highlighted theories straight to the point and that is how you need to understand them from your study materials unless you feel somehow you are not satisfied with the information provided and you want to go further and learn more about the specific um, theories also it's you are welcome to do that as long as you need to understand what they mean their interpretations and their expectations because these theories are talking about what to expect from children who is young is all in the stage one stage two stage three stage four of a, a, a child's uh, uh, development that you are learning in your models um the next uh, subtitle examine perspective about the symbolisms of color in arts colors in arts that's why whenever you need to know first you need to know that my subject is visual arts and that is what i am studying these colors are universal words we use them all the time i put on red t-shirt or purple t-shirt or somebody else put on white t-shirt but what do they really what do they symbolize they are simple uh, they have got different symbols but again these uh, symbols are differ from culture to culture and from person to person and from also the psychological perspective of understanding that's why you need to go through there you need to read and you need to understand and be able to know color black represents what and also you know how it is presents what in terms of symbolism and also in terms of psychological effect you need to know the differences and also you yourself as an individual do you agree with what they say black it it means or have you got different views of uh, of black 
uh, um, subtitle number four explain some elements and styles of visual arts elements and styles elements what are the elements of visual arts there is where we talk of space about line about the shape you need to those are the elements of visual and the styles of art styles of art we'll still talk about them on the next slide but styles of art let's say this is the um, generations of art from old school to the art that we call contemporary art of today. So artists, specific different uh, artists, they are heavy different styles of working. And in, you, in your module, that's, uh, those uh, uh, styles we are referring to the terms that you, 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 you terminologies in your, in your module, still under unit one. That's what, good thing about this is that all this what is being said, it's under unit one. You don't have to go through the whole book looking for this information. They are in unit one and they are also in their chronological order. They are not mixed up one up one, they are just because it's just a highlight of what you study so that when you're studying you're specific to, to the point. So the styles, it's those terms you see there, cubism, exponential and surrealism and those type of, uh, of, of, of what we will look at them uh, later on. Um, Analysis, analysis of the application of visual arts in craft and advertising. That is one Piaget stage of development. That's one theorist. So the stage of development you have got, uh, you have them in your book. Those scribble and uh, learn about them. I don't need to go with, uh, for you inside there because it's there. You just need to learn. You need to learn the differences. How is it craft differ from advertisement or advertising according to the, to, 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 to the, sorry, 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 pardon me there. Analyze the application of visual arts in craft, advertising, and in the stage of development. To me, it's three different uh, 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 um, topics. In craft, advertising, maybe learn to compare the two. How is it craft differ from advertising? And the theory stage of, uh, uh, um, of development, learn them as they are in, the, in, the, in, in, your, in your module because there's a name of the stage there and there's age group for that specific stage. Be able to know this type of a drawing, it's likely to be drawn by a child who is between age of three and seven, and this is uh, the, 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 the stage that is applicable to that. You need to examine and demonstrate how to draw pictures. Picture is worth a thousand words in education. I think it's supposed to be art education there, but yes, ed art education between in and education. Just a picture is worth a thousand words in art education. Aid art there between them. Um, it's a phrase in your 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 your, your study material. I don't know if you are using a hard copy or if you are using uh, your Kindle. But if you are using a hard copy, I use a hard copy, you should be able to find it at uh, page 63, if I'm not mistaken. If you go there, that uh, specific. Read and understand it. You had this question in your assignment, and it was a challenge. It's right there. And when you are going to receive your assignment, you will learn that on each and every way you did not do good, there is a page indicated. On the cover of the assignment, it says, read the comment. The comment I referred to the page indicated there, go in your study material, go to that specific page and identify the possible answers to the question that you have failed in your assignment. Because your exam is not far from your assignment. It's just a sort of, your exam is just a certain part of your, of your assignment. Because in your assignment you are asked to explain more because you have got the time, you have got the study materials. But in the exam you are very limited, you must uh, only write what you, 
have studied and what you are able to remember at that specific time of your exams. Different tools needed for painting. Painting. There is many different activities in your study materials. Painting, making objects, craft, and making models. But what does the slide say? Different tools needed for painting activities. So you need to understand the concept, this theme or this topic, painting. When you are talking about painting, what is it about? What materials do I need? What tools do I need? What is the difference between the tools and materials? Hmm? A brush, maybe it's a tool. You need to, to figure that out. So that's why I'm not. I am only giving you the shortened version of more that you have to study and prepare yourself. So this slide, consider these uh, the topics here as your guidance. Make sure that you are under those uh, um, topics. But uh, there are still more um, uh, 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 slides to come. That means um, the information will get a little bit more specific as we goes. Lines and patterns. Lines and patterns hmm? and color theories. Lines, lines, lines. I don't know if I should, but let me try to, to demonstrate for you here. Line, that is when it's one. It became patterns, it's repeated. Hmm? And also the color theories. Color theories, what are they? And these are basic knowledge of basic visual arts education that you should know because you are in art education. You are looking forward to be, if you are not already, an art educator. And those are the little, the most basic um, knowledge about visual arts that you need to, 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 to prepare yourself. Texture, shape, in art. What is texture? What does texture mean in art? Hmm? What does it mean, art? Let me give you a practical example as you are seated there. Fill your book, your paper, material, fill it. Is it smooth? Is it cracking? Is it aggressive, like making you pain, you feel sure when you're touching it? Or how is it? Feel your t-shirt. Is it smooth or is there some, some uh, the surface is not that uh, maybe uh, um, smooth? Because whatever that you feel there, whatever that you feel, it should be part or what we call textures. Anyway, walls that feeling but in art sometimes a painting you don't need to touch it to make sure that the, here it's textured or not you look at it and the textures must react in your eyes when it's busy you must be able to feel that because pictures in books are printed hmm? so your eyes have to make that feeling that when you look at it do you think it's, it's a smooth i think if you go in your your books if you look at the Old school, old school um, painters, they used to be smooth when they are painting. And as time goes on to contemporary art, the art of today that we are in now, you realize that some painters are rough. They appear to be rough. That's why they are creating textures there. But anyhow, you need to, to learn what are the textures and what are the shapes? And it, all this is coming from your study material that you have. Only if you feel you are not satisfied, then you can go beyond that and uh, do more research. Printing and how to involve learners in printing activities. Know the printing process and how you, as an educator, guided what, by what is being said in your uh, study guide, how do we involve children in painting or printing activities? How do we involve them? That process, those specific guiding instructions are in the book. 
Hmm? Don't put them away and put yours there. Read it for sure. You'll be able to 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 understand that actually you don't need much of extra things apart from what is being said. That is the process that you are guided to use. If in case you are doing a printing activity with your students in class or your learners in class, and you need to involve them. Now this is here is the difference that you need to understand, because that is where most of uh, students get uh, confused. How to prepare for printing activity and how to involve printing uh, uh, learners into the printing activity. It's two different things. Preparation you are putting. Uh, all that is needed together before class started. Involving, you have it already. It's only a matter of following the right process how to make now student or learners execute or do what they are supposed to do with the materials that are already there. So pre already prepared and you are not asked to about preparation. You are asked on how to involve learners uh, mm, in labor. I mean, the statement says how to involve learners in a printing activity, not how to prepare learners for printing activity. You are already done preparing. Now is the how can they be part of the of the of the of the project or the activity? Developing learners' self-image, communication, and the group word skills. Hmm? How do we do that? is we are guided by instructions in our study guides using visual art as the tool. Our visual activities as tools to help learners develop their self-image. Remember, you have got different varieties of learners coming from different backgrounds in your class. Some they proactive, they talk. Some are introvert, they are very quiet, they keep uh, information to themselves. How do you install that? Hmm? Some, they are worried about what others say about them. So in a way, they are rejecting themselves. They are not happy with who they are. So how do you install that? It's not a general question. It's a question that is informed. And if you read in Unit 2, in your, study, uh, in your study materials under Unit 2, go read there. It's not all about what is being said there. There is more writings on that. But in this case, that is how much you are guided. And only if you disagree or you are not satisfied enough, you want to learn more, then you can go ahead, Google, go to libraries, and find out how do we develop learners' self image communications and grouping words. Unit three, very short, huh? clarify and demonstrate how to make models, the relationship between shapes and the meaning of symbolism or symbolism in arts. The relationship, so find the key word there. What is expected? You to be able to differentiate what is shape and what is a meaning in visual arts. So what is the relation? How are they related to each other? The value of creative activities such as murdering. Hmm? Value is the key word there. So what really, what does it add hmm? to a child's creative abilities? when they are murdering, when you give them murdering materials and what value is it adding there. Hmm? We are back to unit one. Like I said, the information will start getting closer and closer to what we are really looking for. The theories about interpreting learners' art. You have got two different theories. Hmm? You have a theory about human figure drawing, evaluating trends in learners, victims of sexual abuse, proves that the human figure drawing of a, an abused learner differ from 
that of a non-abused learner. How or why are they differ? Because these learners are not coming from the same background. Every learner here is experiencing life differently. So, and when you give them art materials, they have to make something, and they don't really assume them. They don't think of what is not in their existence because they are at the basic level of learning how to, so they start with themselves. It's an obvious thing. They are not instructed to do that, but their feeling, their everyday life experience is the one that is guiding them to that. That's why they can express themselves when they are drawing. And as, an, as a teacher, you will be able to identify these types of drawings. How do they differ? How are you able to tell that? No, actually there is a challenge in this learner's drawing. How did the learner come up with that specific drawing? Is it a situation in reality about herself or himself? Or is it a situation in reality about the person next to them? Hmm? Look up on those uh, theories. And what you need to learn there is how, how to evaluate, how to evaluate learners' drawings. How do you evaluate them? Do you compare them? Do you say you draw better, you can't draw? Or do you say you were supposed to draw it the other way around? Or how do you evaluate them? Hmm? Learn and answer your question, answer those questions. When I say how do you evaluate, that is not an exam question. It's a question that you should ask yourself, go in your book and read. More you read, more you understand that, okay, this is how um, learners' drawings are being evaluated. What do I put into consideration as I am evaluating a learner's, uh, um, a learner's uh, uh, drawing? What do I look at? What do I expect? Hmm? Also, the second theory, learners' arts as a helpful index of anxiety and self-esteem with plastic surgery. Recorded drawings of his patients and or patients and before and after plastic surgery and observed very clear uh, observed very clear uh, differences. You need to learn about the, what you should know is self-esteem. Read under that uh, theory. S be able to observe the, 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 the and understand the, the differences. Huh? And the theory of Piaget's uh, stage of development. You have got the stages there. First stage, scrubbing, between two and four. That is the age group. You have the pre-primary or pre-semantic stage or symporic stage between four and seven. The seven age group again. Then you have got the semantic stage, which is between uh, seven and nine. You have got the realistic stage between nine and 13. So if you happen to look at these um, different stages, and as you are looking at it, because in your book or in your study materials, yeah, there is illustrations of drawings done by children at that specific uh, 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 group specified in your well. Be able to compare them. How did the child develop from stage one of scrubbing to stage uh, of the decision stage between 13 and What changes there? Is there any progress happening at all? Because this is what you need for you. You need to know and be able to describe. And it's very important that you know the differences between these stages. Don't say scrubbing while you are giving a realistic uh, stage explanation or description. Realistic. Because the realistic stage, what is the keyword there? Realistic. What that realistic means in your general English? 
so you need to understand decision what does decision mean hmm? especially in that specific uh, um stage the decision stage between 13 and uh, and 16 do you think then the learners there is able to decide on what to draw and how to draw it hmm? it's uh, under unit 1 so all this information on the theories are found in unit 1 Unit 1 continues, perspective about the symbolism of colors in art, emotional reaction of uh, color and uses, and the psychological effects of colors. Emotional and psychological effects of colors. What is the difference between the two? What is the link? That is what you need to know. You need to be able to identify the differences between the two in terms you have to compare mm -hmm. color theories types of colors what remember we are learning about the basic colors color wheel what are the first colors on the wheel that uh, makes up the color wheel color schemes color harmony use of color in arts the color wheel so it's just this information that's why you are see they are dotted color type of colors color schemes color harmony uses of color in art they will the color wheel hmm? it's they are highlighted for you to go and find them in your book and read under there and understand again Types of color, what are they? We are talking about the primary colors, we are talking about the secondary colors, and the tertiary colors. Those are the first uh, colors. Hmm? Basic, different, three different types of colors. Huh? And also uh, styles of uh, visual arts. You have got the Renaissance, they are surrealism, symbolism, tone, connective, Color wheel, chrome, baroque, impressionism, cubism, and impression. What is the difference between the two? Hmm? So these are the styles of visual art, the models of visual arts, the stages of visual arts. Hmm? What you need to know about this, you need to be able to describe because only then when you can describe, you can know how is one style differ from another style and what happens under that specific style. That is what it means by knowing the description of something gives you the knowledge of how it differs from the other thing again hmm? surrealism once you know the description of surrealism you will know how it differ from tone because you also know that the the, 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 the the you also know the the the, 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 the 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 definition or the description of tone so you need to be able to draw the differences that's why you need to know these concepts i mean the description of these keywords all in unit one um, analysis application of um, visual arts in craft and advertising. Distinction. What does distinction mean? Differences. How is it differ? How is it craft differ from advertising? What is involved in their differences? What does an artist do which is differ? from how the advertiser do it. Hmm? So you need to know those differences. Unit two, a picture is worth a thousand. So picture tells story as much as words can do. What does it mean? Like I referred you to, 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 to page 63. In your, it's my favorite uh, page anyway that's how I know it by heart go there and read you will be able to know how does 
or how what does it mean a picture is worth a thousand words in education and the area i mentioned that put art education there so because you remain focused in your in your in your, in your subject pictures and themes the theme pictures chronic pictures coloring in pictures pictures with dotted lines to trace this is all the pictures that you find in the learners young children's books pictures and themes how do you link the picture to the theme that you want to teach the children if you one of the themes you mentioned in your study material is my, my body if you have to teach children about the theme that say about my body so what pictures do you get what type of pictures do you get and put together and the moment you display them to the children children will be able to understand or learners will be able to understand that here yes that is the body it only that uh, the, the the theme says my body not that body but children should be able to to, to 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 identify there must be a link there must be a relation there must be correct pictures matching the theme that you are teaching hmm? and they are different that's why those are the different uh, pictures theme pictures phonic pictures coloring in pictures pictures that you give to children outlined and it's for learners to color them in pictures with dotted lines to trace they are only drawn with dots, hmm? with dots, a ball with dots. That is how it appears in the book. Hmm? And it's for the child now to connect the dots. It's for the child to connect the dots. And when they connect, the dots are connected, I think it can ring now to, 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 to cry in pictures because now the child will get another different picture and they color in what? They color in. But when you give to them, it's all in white, so it's for the learners to, or uh, children to, to color in. Lines and patterns. Line activities for the pre-primary learners. Patterns as a principle of repetition. We talk about line when it's one, and more you repeat them, they form patterns. What is pattern? Look at the top or the t-shirt or the jacket you are having on now or the next person is there any pictures on it is there any decorations on it those are the patterns we are talking about in visual arts patterns repeated patterns hmm? okay texture and shapes in visual arts using texture in art and using shapes in arts how do you use textures in art how do you use shape in art so what you need to know here it's what texture is as we have spoken about it earlier and also what shape is and then you refer to visual arts and this is not about your danger here it's not about testing your general knowledge it's about what is provided and in your study materials so you need to read so that you are able to differentiate you are able to tell if you are asked to compare the two how do you use uh, 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 texture in art how do you use uh, how or how does using texture in art differ from uh, using shapes in art how what is how is the process differ you want to know the differences if you don't know the process of textures and you don't know the process of shape. You need to know the two differences. Uh, unit two continues painting and the printing and how to involve learners in printing activities. If you are tasked to tell how do you involve learners when you are printing and like i emphasized before that involving is different from preparation or preparing so don't confuse yourself there involving means how do children become in start to working on the project 
preparing it's about finding what is needed for the children to be able to prepare i mean to 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 to, to start doing the the actual work hmm? when you are looking for materials and all that and that is we are preparing hmm? and if involving learners in that activities from you uh, uh, means you have to send also learners you don't maybe you don't want to provide learners with materials then you involve them that no the involvement their involvement starts there when you ask them to bring materials from home that's when that's where their involvement uh, starts it's got nothing to do with what mater the materials that you 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 brought along that was you preparing so that's why you what you what you need to know there it's how to prepare learners in either painting or printing activities but here you are instructed to start from the preparation motivation identification of the problem the practice experiment or learning or lesson learnings executing executing meaning doing and how are you evaluate going to evaluate and appreciate evaluation means now that the learners are done with their executions you are looking that time when you are looking and you are judging trying to see where the learner did well where the learner did not do well did not uh, convince you that much that you are, you are and how do you appreciate them printing activities process what is involved materials what materials do you need tools what tools do you need when you are printing and the methods what is the what is the procedure there how to develop self learners uh, self uh, image communication and group uh, word skills it involves several steps to develop a positive or to develop a positive um, image in a learner so what is the process it involves several steps the steps what are the steps that is what the the, the the instruction says it involves several steps to develop a positive self image in a learner read in your book under unit 2 and perhaps you will find those steps and learn and know them so that you, tomorrow when you are working with children don't you just look at them when they, they feel even hopeless about themselves. Be able to, to guide them. Unity 3, clarify and demonstrate how to make models. The relationship between uh, meaning, symbols, and art. So what are the unfamiliarities? How is it shaped? Unfamiliarities, that means how is shape differ from forms what is the difference between the two how are they differ you want to know how they differ if you don't know what shapes in visual arts is if you don't know what forms in visual arts are if you don't know you won't know how they differ from one another and how do you get to know it's by reading in your module why do i emphasize that much that read your module it's because i'm just coming from the experience with your assignment you have got the study material at home some assignments i don't want to demoralize you or to feel you bad, but some of you did not even open the study material you just answered from your general understanding which is not wrong but you have to be guided by instruction given in your book so that only that you will be talking about the right uh, or so that we can be on the same page when we are talking about uh, the forms and, uh, and, and shapes. Study materials recommended for you to contact during your exam. If you have got um, a Kindle that is provided to you by IOL, I understand it's loaded with many different uh, uh, subjects that you are doing there. And among them, it's the, uh, um, the, 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 the information on visual art studies. So find it in there. And also, I tried helping uh, one student to find information in the Kindle. And what we were using there, it's using that uh, search block there. If you have got a smartphone, you should know how to search. 
circle sometimes we make a stick there or well, that's a circle you click there it gives you a bar where you should write type in the keyword in that specific sentence where you don't understand in case we have gotten our study material recommended the IOL study guide and Kindle if I want to know recommended I type in recommended there then hit enter it will direct me to where that specific term recommended first mentioned then it goes down and it highlights it in a different color so you see it in that space that means that's where it starts then you go until you find the term that you so if it's hand eye training if you just type that as one word but hand with a dash in the word i you hit and it will direct you to that specific page because you scrolling down and up since you have got many information there you will not uh, arrive to the conclusion or the information that you are looking for on time otherwise um i wish you all the best with your exams and it must not end here if you don't understand uh, what is being said or in your slides please uh, use my contact details it does not have a limited time of when to contact me, no. The procedure there is first you text. I am so-so and I am preparing for my exams and I don't understand something you mentioned in the presentation and I would like to have more clarity on that. What do you really mean? But don't ask me, is that the question in the exam? No. When I say the how, they describe it for you to be able to ask yourself those questions and see, are you able to tell? If you are able to tell, that means you understand. If you are not, that means you need to go back in your book and uh, read and make yourself understand. <laughs>